Can the Ender 3 Pro print flexible materials like TPU? Well, the short answer is yes, but stay tuned for tips and tricks on how to have a better experience and hopefully not have any failed TPU prints. We'll talk about a printable extruder that you can use to make your TPU printing more reliable. We'll look at Cura settings, and also we'll look at different kinds of uh, TPU because not all TPU filaments are the same. Although the Ender 3 Pro can print flexible filaments okay in its stock form, we can make it a bit more reliable by printing ourselves a upgraded uh, extruder. The original extruder has a very large hole in this section here, which causes the filament at times to get tangled and shoot out the side. And what these upgraded uh, extruders actually do is they make it so there is no gap between the extruder gear and the PTFE tube. So we actually add an extra length of tube in here which bridges that gap. And the one that I printed was a remix of Josh VV or I guess Josh 55. And the one that I printed is this guy here. And the really only difference is that this one has a smaller opening. And I think he says here it's a four millimeter opening, which means the PTFE tube is very, very tight, which is great because it won't uh, start to move in and out as you do retractions and feeding and so forth. So very simple, we have just one file to download. All right, so we'll print this in PETG. Usually I print in PLA, but I recently started printing in PETG. So just for fun, we will do PETG. Okay. I'm going to do uh, 50% um, and I'll do gyroid for extra uh, strength. And then we do want a little bit of support just touching the build plate. That should be it. So this will give us support down here so we make sure that this hole is perfectly round and centered. All right, so here's our printed piece. Came out fairly well. And there was a small support here, which I've already removed. And what we wanna do is get a piece of PTFE tube in this hole. And if you can see, there's a little tiny lip at the very end. So the tube should go from about here to maybe about there. So I've got my tube here. I'll first start off by cutting the end very straight with a knife. Now this is the hard part. You have to get this tube in there. It's a very tight fit. Now because it's a very tight fit, we may have to sacrifice a little bit of our tube. I'm just gonna grab it with this. And then the easiest way is just to twist it back and forth. Okay, so it looks like it's almost in. Okay, it has a little bit more to go. Let's take a little bit closer. There we go, I think I, I felt it go in all the way. So if you can see, we've got it in all the way now. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we wanna cut this at an angle. So something like this that follows the actual angle of the bracket. All right, so there we go. Now we'll have to do a little bit of a test fit because we don't want this to hit uh, the actual gear itself. But that looks like it's fairly good. And then last step, we'll grab a piece of filament and just make sure that there's no crimp on the edge. So we can see it, it goes in very, very smoothly. All right, so now all you gotta do is attach your fitting 
Install this and you should have a way better experience with printing flexible filament. Here are the Cura settings that we use for the Sane Smart TPU. We also use very similar settings for the Preline TPU as well. The layer height is 0.16 to give a little bit better layer adhesion and also a finer texture. The initial layer is 0.2 to help with bed adhesion. Likewise, layer width is 110, again, help with layer adhesion. Nothing really too revolutionary over here. The infill density, you use a 70% for things like GoPro mounts. You vary, you vary them based off of what you try to print. Infill pattern for flexibles, it's recommended to use cubic. Print at uh, 210. Now, this is interesting because a lot of folks think that uh, printing at a lower temperature will help with uh, stringing. That may or may not be true. We tried many different temperatures with a uh, stringing test. Actually found that too low of a temperature causes more pressure in the nozzle, which leads to a little more stringing. You'll have to play with this for your specific printer, but found that anywhere between you know, 200, 220, or around there seems to work very well. Uh, build plate temperature, 60, flow 100, make sure you've calibrated your extruder. Print speed, definitely want to print uh, a lot slower, so we print uh, 25. Travel speed, bumped it up to 170 just to get the head moving a little bit quicker between uh, extrusions, reduce our uh, stringing. Initial layer, very slow, I've done uh, 5 millimeters per second here, which sounds terribly slow, but it does help get you a nice uh, finish on the initial layer. This is where Saint Smart actually says turn off retractions, turn off combing. Uh, we tried that and we got a terrible print. A lot of stringing and not those wispy strings but very thick strings. So I say leave uh, retraction on. If you're using a Bowden setup still, 5.5 and 25 seems to work best. If you're using direct uh, drive, 1.5 and 27. Retraction minimal travel, reduce it down to one. Combing, you want, you want it to comb, not in the skin though. And what that does is it prevents uh, the combing from happening on the surfaces of the print. That way you don't see any nozzle lines or any kind of stringing on that skin. Yeah, we use uh, print cooling, and of course, uh, support settings will depend on what you try to print. Uh, the support Z distance made a 0.2, and this you have to play with to see what gives you a nice finish underneath um, the support, but also lets you take the support off very easily. Use the very low uh, density for the support. You can play with that and see. And that's pretty much it. I think the main piece here is making sure you get your temperature right, you play with your retraction, distance, and speed to find what works best for your printer and your material. And that's it, experimentation. And just to give an idea, when we got a print like this here, so we have a GoPro mount, the best way to print this, especially for folks new to 3D printing, would be to have this piece here on the build surface. So I typically print these with, uh, I go select face, this one here, and then I'm just gonna say center. So I would print this like this, and I would turn on the generate supports everywhere, because we need supports definitely down here. Uh, we probably will wanna have supports here and here as well but uh, you don't really need supports here, you don't need supports here either, and you definitely don't need supports in the holes. So if you really wanna take the time, what you can do now is you can come and say support blockers. So we don't want supports here, don't want supports, blocker, don't want supports, support blockers, don't want supports here, 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 um, here, here, and then next thing you have to do is resize these support blockers appropriately. So we want to have it maybe something like that, maybe something like that. Just 
Be smaller. Okay, now we have to move these. So we want to move them just to cover the holes. Something like that. Something like that. Okay, so this one's too big, we'll have to resize. Like that. And then this guy here. Like that. This guy here. Something like that. Okay, so now we slice it. And the key here is we want to look and make sure we've gotten all the proper support because it does say 12 hours. We don't want to wait 12 hours and find that we missed something. So spend the time. Oh, so we can already see, even though we said no support here, we just missed it so we have support. Then I go back, raise it up a little bit, re-slice. Preview. Yeah, so we can see we have no support there, no support here. We do have support here, we have support there. We don't have support in the holes. Yeah, this should be perfect now. All right, something to bear in mind when you're deciding on which TPU to purchase. Not all TPUs are the same. For example, here we've got a pre-line TPU. This is from Amazon. I'll give you a link in the description. This is rated at 95A hardness. Now, if you compare that to this guy over here, this is a Saint Smart uh, TPU, again, rated 95A. But what I find is the Saint Smart feels a lot different than the Preline. It's also four times more expensive. So if we look at these two mounts, these were printed with the exact same uh, STL file, same G code, same settings, everything. So we can see one of them is shinier. So this one here is the Saint Smart. This is the Preline. And the biggest difference, just check this out, is how soft they are. So I'm giving about the same kind of pressure on each of them. We can see the Saint Smart is very elasticy, very kind of flexible, whereas the Preline is a lot uh, stiffer. So if I try to squeeze as much as possible, we can see a difference here. And then the other piece to bear in mind also is the preline being harder, it's also easier to print. So we can see not too many uh, imperfections. It printed very, very well on the Ender 3. Whereas the Sane Smart, because it is a lot more uh, flexible and a lot more stretchy, we have a couple of more uh, surface artifacts here. We have a little bit more stringing. So it's all about picking the right TPU for the job. For GoPro mounts, I prefer the Saint Smart because it is a lot more flexible, it's a lot more uh, shock absorbent. And my gauge here is, again, comparison to the Rotor Riot mount they purchased. If I compare these two, they feel very, very similar. And it's possible that maybe even Rotor Riot's using the Saint Smart because we can tell that they're equally stretchable, equally squishable, feel very, very similar. Here's the first GoPro mount that we printed when the filament was brand new. We can see minimal stringing, very smooth finish, looking actually quite nice. And of course, this is a six or seven hour print. So while we printed two of these, the filament had a lot of chance to absorb moisture. And this is what we got. So we can see that there's a lot of stringing. The texture of the print looks terrible. And even what you see here is after we clean it up a little bit, but just down here, you can see how much stringing we got, how bad and rough the texture is. Just listen to that. And after printing this, we put the filament in the oven at 160 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour and no changes to file. This is what came out. 
and we can see here not as good as the first one but fairly smooth fairly smooth not uh, too much stringing and honestly I think if we left it in the oven for maybe another half an hour it would have been even better the next issue we had, especially when printing smaller TPU items, was bed adhesion. We had very good bed leveling, but these smaller objects would not adhere. And you can see we had a lot of failed prints. And we resolved this by simply using a regular white glue stick and putting that glue stick on the bed when it was cold, printing right on that glued surface, no more bed adhesion problems. All right guys, hope that this video helps you with getting your Ender 3 Pro up and running and printing flexible TPU filament successfully. Make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for additional videos on the Ender 3 Pro, as well as make sure to check out our playlist. What kind of craziness is this?